one will do it against it. I know they will. All right, 35% of our energy is derived from glucose, so we still get a lot from glucose. And so there, 5% is derived from glucose. Even not much of our body depends on amino acids for energy. We don't get much energy from amino acids. I mean, yeah, amino acids are used better to build more protein. More protein, yeah. Okay, well anyway, so much for that. Veins, I do want to mention this. Now, this is, a, this is an area right here I tweaked your notes a little bit on. They've been tweaked a little bit. The cardiac veins begin at the apex. What's the apex of the heart? Apex is the pointed part, right? Cardiac veins. Now, and here's the deal. Let me just kind of show you. And I, I, I tweak this a little bit. Most of the veins empty into what's called the coronary sinus, uh, which discharges into the... Now, here's the thing you've got to try to remember. All the venous blood from the heart itself empties into the right atrium. It all goes into the right atrium. Where does the blood from the body go? Right atrium, doesn't it? It all goes into the right atrium. All right, now into the right atrium. Via, now that's a term you've never heard before. Via the Thebison valve. There's a valve in the wall of the right atrium which lets the venous blood into that right atrium. And that valve is called the Thebison valve. Thebison, T-H-E-B-E-S-I-N. I think I that shows up on your test. The Thebison valve. The great, now this is what you don't have in your notes. Right here you don't have this. There's a great, and there's a meat, there's a middle, and there's a small cardiac vein for sure. And then another little, I look at this one. The great cardiac drain, vein drains the left and right ventricle and the left atrium. In other words, it's pretty much draining the blood that the left coronary artery sent to the heart. In other words, it's draining both the, the left and right ventricle and the left atrium. What does the left coronary? You'll have to look at it. You might have to look back at your notes. Where does the left coronary send blood? It doesn't, the left coronary sends blood to the left and right atrium and the left atrium, the left coronary. Well, the great, the, the great vein, the great cardiac vein drains the left and right ventricle and the left atrium and the left. Now, we'll go back over this carefully. Now, right here, I put the middle cardiac vein drains the left and right ventricle. So it, the ventricles get a big, big, uh, a big, a lot of, a lot of drainage. So the middle. Now, the small cardiac vein drains the right atrium and right ventricle. The small. So there's a there's a great cardiac drain vein. They they do put the great cardiac drain drains the left and right ventricle and the left atrium. The middle cardiac backs up and drains the left and right ventricle. The small cardiac drains the right atrium and right ventricle, drains the right atrium and right ventricle. Uh, and you that, that just kind of gives you a little bit. There's an anterior that, again, you don't need to. The only thing I would kind of check on here, just, card, just kind of check the names of them and know the fact that most of these veins empty into the coronary sinus. That last one doesn't. That last one empties directly into the right atrium. The last one does. The rest of those, the great, middle, and small, empty into the, what's called the coronary sinus. Okay? So again, this, in other words, these veins, we don't ever hear much about vein problems in the heart. The problem is you, is most often with a what? Coronary artery. But the, but the veins do play a role. I mean, they've got to get the blood back into, they've got to get the blood back to the, now, one thing you've got to remember, where does all the venous blood from the body and the heart itself, where does it all go back to? Right atrium. All of you know that? Mm -hmm. All the venous blood, whether from the body mm -hmm. or from the heart muscle itself, all the venous blood ends up back in the right atrium, in the right atrium type situation. So if that goes off, we'll go back to it now. Here we just go back. There it is right there. Now, if you happen to have a book, I brought I brought this book right here. If you happen to have if you happen to have a textbook, everybody, I just have to break this one. If you don't, don't you know, whatever one you've got. It, I just happen to have this. This is on page 730. Page 730 in this book. If you happen to have a book, it talks about the, in other words, here's the, the coronary veins are mentioned right here. And I've highlighted down in here some of the stuff on the coronary veins. And uh, I think the picture on the page before, see, this is where that picture that I had up there, that's where that picture's coming from. It's coming from Totora. There's the picture right there that I had up there showing the arteries and veins of the coronary. 
Okay, so there, there is the, there is the idea right there. Cardiac veins. Okay, now and just kind of jot that down. Great cardiac vein, middle cardiac, vein, kind of small. You know, I'm not going to ask you details. The only one I might ask you details of is the great cardiac vein. Put a star by great and middle cardiac vein. I'm, I'm again, I'm just great and middle cardiac vein. Just kind of be aware of that and so forth. Okay, there's the veins. Okay, now then, clinical. Okay, here is what I like. Clinical stuff. Okay, clinical stuff. That's kind of blurry. Got blurry, didn't it, James? Is that a little better? Maybe. All right, clinical. Blockage of a coronary artery is called a coronary thrombosis. Don't forget that. Coronary thrombosis. All right, and um, coronary thrombosis. Blockage. Okay. All right. Ischemia. Reduced blood supply to an area. Ischemia. Reduced blood supply to an area. Results when there is partial blockage. Ischemia. Ischemia. All right. Ischemia results in it results in a heart muscle not getting enough oxygen. In other words, ischemia is redu reduced blood supply which translates into not enough oxygen, which translates into hypoxia, which translates into angina. The heart. Okay. All right. Therefore, the tissue is in a state of hypoxia. Does everybody know that word, hypoxia? Now, remember, y'all, I heard of a lady yesterday who had a heart attack. She survived. And it, it really backed up what I teach. This woman said it felt like someone was stepping on her chest, was stepping on her. And remember how I told you that in women, many times, angina, some people say angina, some people say angina, of which there are two basic types of angina. There is unstable and there's exertion. Now, like she's sitting here calmly. Now, she was sitting here and all of a sudden, she got severe chest pain. Angina. That would be unstable. Now I'm standing up here. If I start doing those bleachers, then or running or walking, and I start getting some chest pain, that is exertion angina. All right. Now in women, the angina many times will feel like a pressure right here. Pressure. In men, it many times feels like a dull ache, like an ache, like uh, uh. exertion, like I've been losing weight. So there, my arm. It's aching. It's just a dull ache. And sometimes it, it, it'll go away. It'll, go, it'll be there, and then it'll go away. That's called exertion in China. And then when, if that persists, then that's when the man or woman, that, everybody, is a warning signal. That is a warning. And so most people are like I was. It has to be there before I can say, what's going on? You know, what's that? You know? Yeah, what, what, what is this? Better get something. Better check this out. Check it out. See what's going on. Yeah. All right. But anyway, therefore, the tissue is in a state of hypoxia, and we have ischemia. Don't forget that coronary thrombosis, ischemia, reduced blood supply. Now, right here, everybody, there is an obstructed artery. <coughs> That's what a coronary artery would look like, obstructed. And in the coronary obstruct in the obstructed artery, this is atherosclerotic plaque, a partially obstructed lumen. Now, here's the general rule of thumb, everybody. Listen to this. You may or may not have known this. The general rule of thumb is when a coronary artery becomes 75% blockage, the person will experience pains of angina. Normally. Normally. If a person is a diabetic, they may not. They don't feel pain. 